let's talk about the next 54 games. So in the first 54 games, and you're like, AJ, why do you keep bringing up these 54 games? There's a reason why I bring up those 54 games. Everybody knows the famed manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers. His name is Tommy Lasorda, and he said that you can break the baseball season down into basically three segments. 162 games divided by three is 54, okay? Those 54 games, and what he says in this is this. You're going to win 54. You're going to lose 54. And he said what sets good teams apart is what they do with that middle section of 54 games. So let's look at the Tigers. So going into the Pittsburgh series, right? Coming out of the Yankees series, game 55 was Tuesday night. So before they took on the Pirates, they had played their first 54 games, and they were 21-33. and 33. Not great. Not great. But in their last 17, they are 10-7 and 7 in their last 17, which is better than 21-33 and 33 as far as winning percentages go. That's an improvement, right? What we want to see over these next 54 games is we want to see a closer to 500 record in those 54 games so if you have 54 that's what 27 you want to try to get around 25 and 29 that would be good you want to get around maybe a 27 and 27 or if at all you can get above 27 wins in the next 54 if they can do that i think that we're going to see this team actually meet the type of potential that we thought that they had at the beginning of the season Listen, water always finds its level. Javi Baez is not going to hit sub 200 for the rest of the season. Now, is he going to hit 260, 270, 280? No, I'm not saying that he's going to do that. But he is going to start putting more balls into play. And Javi, when he puts the ball into play, that double that he ripped Tuesday night came off the bat at 112 miles per hour. That's pretty hard hit, Okay. When water starts to find its level as far as these offensive guys go, and Miggy continues to be Miggy and, and rip those singles and keep pushing runners across the plate in the seventh inning or later, you're going to start to see more wins than you are losses, especially when you start to introduce names back like Robbie Grossman. When you see a guy like R Riley Green make his debut, that's only going to improve this lineup. And truthfully, that's closer than we think that it is. Okay? A lot closer than we think that it is. Grossman and Green have both been playing in AAA this last week. And I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if A, there's some kind of move made tomorrow before the game. Or B, immediately going into the next series on Monday with the White Sox because we're not going to keep these guys down forever. It's going to leave them with a lot of decisions to make. We Now we have a plethora of outfielders that you're going to have to make some hard decisions on. What do you do with Willie Castro? What do you do with Derek Hill? What do you <coughs> do with Daz Cameron who has gotten extended run and has been producing quite well? He's been a very not overwhelming surprise. But he's been okay. He's done exactly what we would expect somebody to get their first run at the MLB in an extended look. He's had at-bats before in previous years. I understand all that. But he has been putting the ball in play and he's been hitting the ball hard, which has been very nice to see. So what do you do with guys like that? What do you do with a Harold Castro, a Willie Castro, a Daz Cameron, and a Derek Hill when you have three bona fide outfielders already in Meadows, Green, and Grossman. There's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of tough decisions to make. Now Willie Castro, if he can continue to put the ball in play, even though truthfully of that list that I made, I would probably rank him like third of who I would like to keep. I would love Harold to stay up because Harold just hits the ball wherever he's at in the lineup and wherever he's playing in the field. He just hits the ball, and you need a guy like that. He can play the outfield, he can play the infield, and he has put the ball in play. So Harold Castro is safe. 
Daz and Willie is going to be the decision, right? I, I think Derek Hill has had his chance. I think Derek Hill is probably going to be a casualty of these guys coming off of the DL. So the decision is going to come down to Willie and Daz and who is either A, performing better at that point in time or who is more versatile, which obviously is Willie because he can play the infield not great, but he can, he has experience there, and he can also play the outfield. So they're going to have to make these decisions, but these decisions are going to drastically impact these next 54 games that we are talking about. So when the Tigers have played 108 games, I really want to see them closer to a 51 and 57 right six games under 500 which would be a four game improvement over where they're at now and that's improving obviously we would love them to be 54 and 54 or better but we're talking astronomical improvement and i just don't necessarily see that type of astronomical improvement happening in these next 54 games do i see four game increase a five game increase yeah and that little increase can then bolster you into maybe another five game increase and you get to 500 by the end of the season. That's not, that's what I had them pegged at this season was a, was a 500, maybe one or two games over 500 plus or minus two or three games. So not being that far off, if they make these types of improvements, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens come the trade deadline as well. But these next 54 games, they're going to tell us a lot about what this team is. We think we know what this team is off of these first 54, right? 12 games under 500, not great. Okay, I understand that. But the first two games of this second set of 54 games, they've won. And we're going to see what they have to give and what they can do against a pretty stiff competition in the Toronto Blue Jays.